orange repeat icons. Okay. Uh, so we're going to talk about offline resilience uh, and how it can be achieved with service workers, which are the base of Warbox library. So let's get to this. Uh, we had one session uh, a month or so uh, ago uh, about service workers in particular and uh, their low level API uh, and how it can be used for offline resilience. And if you didn't participate, so there, there is quick recap for you. Uh, so offline experience and like network indication is not something like definite, it's more ambiguous. And usually it's in often on state and obviously navigator online can be used, can be used as reliable indicator of it. And there may be various reasons why user is offline, but the, it may be there's a server downtime or something like on the backend side, not only on not only the user behavior, but the the result is the same. That some resource that is available on network is not available for the user at the moment, and the service workers deliver um, bad experience for users with unstable or non-existent network connection because they. Their nature is that they actually network proxy, which you as a developer can control. And they sit in the, uh, in the middle of the web page and the network and can intercept HTTP requests, read them from cache or cache back basically, or whatever else you could expect from a proxy. And usually they use together with cache API to actually cache something. Uh, so, Basically, they deliver clowns, client-side caching. Uh, even though this sounds cool, uh, but it's still complex. And one of the like, non-intuitive complexities is that the update for websites with service workers usually closer to network applications because you should have like users should have to close the application in order to update, so they don't lose data. Um, and today we're going to talk about Warbox, which uh, which actually simplifies works with uh, service workers and provides more um, friendly experience for the developers, and uh, basically delivers this big big complexity to users and better experience. So we're going to see what internal modules there are uh, that Warbox delivers, how you could achieve pre-caching and write runtime caching with it, what plugins can be used for, uh, and how it make it, they make it easier to work with caching, and what's so cool about background scene. Uh, I'll start in, in the middle of some sections, and um, yeah, you also are free to, to take questions. And you can raise your hand if you want to ask something at that time. But before that, uh, there will be small quiz. Uh, it's somewhat based on the uh, previous section, but maybe it would be uh, like easier for anybody who at least heard about the offline experience and service work. So that would be Zoom poll. Uh, I believe you should see the questions by now. Yeah, let's let's have three minutes to answer, and yeah, maybe we could discuss that. Mm. Yeah. Do did you get the poll? Um, yes. Yes. Okay, next.
Okay, I think almost a half people are done. Need more minutes? Um, yeah, maybe it's, let's start to check the results. Um, yeah, I believe you should see the outcomes, like how people voted. So it seems overall everybody is um, you know, on the same page that service workers are um, for client side cash uh, <laughs> Probably I'll slip this uh, hint uh, on the previous slide. Yeah, but. Generally, it's like their main uh, purpose. Yeah, CCPU heavy operations uh, are also second best choice. Uh, probably that was confused with web workers, I guess. Then we have service workers uh, interacting with local storage. Uh, so I have bad news <laughs> for you guys that service workers cannot access local storage. Uh, that's because oh, your results maybe can do this. Oh, you should see by now. Um, yeah, service workers are uh, asynchronous. Uh, so basically, they cannot have access to asynchronous APIs, which is local storages, but they could have access to IndexedDB, which is asynchronous as well. Yeah, so keep that in mind if you fancy local storage. that won't be a friend with service workers. Um, yeah, also see that uh, how to install a like, register service worker. Yeah, people mostly know this one. Yeah, so this is nice. Um, service worker can intercept cross-region requests. Uh, yeah, see people may or may not be confused. Yeah, it can, but it... Uh, it should be somewhat complex. It's not like the one uh, line task, yeah, but it's still possible. Um, which event service worker cannot receive? Um, unfortunately, that's not like uh, what half people have think. That's why when we'll get to this point when <laughs> we would want to have that event, event during this presentation, but uh, yeah, there will be none. So wait event cannot be received by service worker. Uh, oh, nice, cache, cache API question. <laughs> there is half and half uh, responses. So the answer is if cache API cache can cache non-get, like only get requests, that is true. It cannot cache post, re post request. That's also like some, um, limitation of service workers that uh, this war box has an answer to. We'll see this uh, at the second half of the presentation. One service worker may become redundant. Uh, if redundant is confusing work, that's the state of service worker, but basically that's when it, it's inactive. Um, yeah, probably it's not uh, so obvious. So here, uh, the, on the answer that got the list responses, when new version of service worker is released, uh, the, the one that was running before becomes redundant, basically because new version is installed. And um, yeah, when space limit is reached, that's kind of questionable, but it's still possible space limit reached and um, service work cannot write anything to cache, but it still may be running um, yeah, if it doesn't interact with cache. For example, if it accepts um, like messages from other service worker and yeah, does whatever. So it's still possible for, for it to be active, not necessarily redundant. Uh, tricky question if page refresh would work for a website on the service worker. No, <laughs> I'm sorry, but no, um, that's the common problem. Uh, 
when people try to get to work with service workers and they want to refresh the like get the fresh version of the website which has service worker managing it. So page refresh won't work. Um, usually it, it needs to, like user would need to close <laughs> all the tabs to get the update. That's how like uh, native application work, right? So Chrome won't update itself. It will show update is available, but it would uh, say that it needs to close all the windows before it can update. So that that's same you could expect from website with service working. And necessary condition to enable service worker on the website, uh, that's HTTPS. Um, space is uh, like available storage space is important, but still it's not like necessary. It's, uh, it's nice to have, I guess, uh, depending on how you, what you write in your service worker, whether it can handle uh, errors with missing space. But without run, running on HTTPS, uh, basically service worker API won't be available in the browser. Uh, you would say window dot, uh, navigator dot service worker, but nothing is there. And then, yeah, tricky question. <laughs> if service worker can be used now, yes. Um, in all modern browsers, modern meaning um, some that support is six at least, Service worker should be there in uh, Chrome, Safari, Edge. Yeah, obviously not Internet Explorer 6, but uh, something cooler. Yeah, so they can be used now. Okay, are there any questions regarding Paul? Okay, let's get to the presentation. Um, yeah, so. <sighs> You should see this by now. <laughs> so it's workers are hard and um, they also deliver good functionality. Uh, one of them is offline resilience, but it comes with complexity. And um, many written <laughs> about that. Um, so you know that uh, like programmers are saying there are two hard problems in computer, computer science. Cache invalidation, naming things, and all by one error. <laughs> and caching is what service workers do. It's literally number one hard problem. So don't be discouraged. <laughs> yeah, we, everybody was there, I would say. And warm box would help to make this transition easier from uh, thinking in service workers, I would say. So this, this is a set of libraries, uh, basically a set of NPM modules uh, for different things that you might want uh, with service workers and caching. It was developed by Google, which like Google in general uh, pushes for uh, progressive web apps and offline experiences. That's why they have uh, many tools for that. And the main purpose of Warbox is to enforce best practices and reduce uh, boilerplate code because it delivers it uh, inside the library. Uh, and if that needs a particular notice, uh, the Warbox obviously works only on those browsers, the service worker support. Luckily, that's uh, yeah, many of them. The last one uh, got this support was probably Safari um, on iOS 11.3. Uh, so it's not far uh, back in the, in the um, past. Um, yes, but now it's like available. Uh, so what's inside Wordbox? Um, basically, there are three collections of modules. Uh, the biggest one is that it are tools that run inside service worker and help to manage uh, caching and like, service worker interactions with the, with the cache <laughs> and like main application. There are also tools that run inside the build uh, process before the website is getting to the user. There are three of them. They kind of interchangeable based on the, like, the way you build the website. We'll see 
probably only one of them <laughs> in details. And there is also window um, window packages with which run in the window context. That's uh, in the back web app itself. Usually, it's used to register a service worker and interact with it, uh, like update or drive the update from the web page. All of those can be installed uh, separately. Uh, some of these, like uh, all those collections, uh, some of the service worker tools should be used together, like uh, background scene should be used with some strategy, but it's not necessarily, I would say it's like a typical case. And also what's nice about this, that you could, uh, like if you have a service worker um, manual written in the service worker syntax, and you want to transition using Workbox, that also could be done uh, like gradually. You could uh, apply precation from Workbox and sometime later add background sync. So it's uh, still usable one by one. And we'll see in uh, Workbox window first. Um, that's the uh, library for managing service worker in the web page. So that's like uh, this JS file would be a script, which is a part of the application, web, web application not service worker itself. And this looks pretty simple, right? Uh, that's navigator service worker register method that just to inform the, the web page has a service dedicated service worker. And in Workbox, it, it looks somewhat similar. Uh, you need to have this dependency and then wrap the script, service worker script and the Workbox class and just register, right? But then it gets to real work. Uh, so warm works says in the day. So on the left, you see how like terrible <laughs> boilerplate code to achieve something trivial to inform the user when new version of service worker is available. So why can't we just like update whenever we want? Uh, that's because uh, update flow for service workers. Uh, they have the update model basically, which says you cannot update something uh, like it's, it, as it, it's running. So traditionally, user would need to close all the tabs to to get the update. Uh, it is possible, yeah, to go to get away from this uh, flow and yeah, enforce it and enforce some like uh, online. Um, update, but it, there is still a risk that the user might lose data or have it like corrupted. So that's why uh, one of the best practices in the industry is that we allow users to do what they want on the application, then uh, we show the message when there is an update and they choose the time when they're ready to update. So that's why showing the message <laughs> when your version is available is uh, like good manner, I guess. Instead of this, um, like several lines of code, uh, probably uh, like more comfortable to, to have this Warbox version of it. Here is waiting event that Warbox added in the last latest version, version six, by the user users of uh, service workers. It's not It's not a part of service worker API. It's just the, the event that Warbox could accept. And waiting means that new version of service worker was released, was downloaded by the browser. It installed all its dependencies and is ready to be like swap, uh, like swap the version of the website that is currently running. So that's what waiting uh, means. Uh, some new version is waiting in the background and we may inform user, yeah, it's there and you can click to get it. Yeah, just, just don't do those alerts. They're terrible. Yeah, hopefully you could have nice UI. Uh, then uh, besides pre-caching, uh, uh, sorry. Besides, like the managing service worker, there is pre-caching, uh, which is one of the popular techniques uh, of the usage service workers. 
uh, that's putting resources to static resources, usually called application shell. That's um, scripts, styles, fonts, everything that constitutes your website. Uh, and we put that to cache before even user requests it. So that's sometime uh, on the first website visit. And um, like if you imagine uh, the website um, which serves blocks, uh, people <laughs> write in some diaries, blocks, and uh, yeah, other people commenting. So the styles, then the markup of such website would be application shell, the resources that we, we have even before the user access the website. And the text of the articles would be the dynamic content, uh, which would fill up that application shell. Uh, and like when when we uh, get when we put those resources to cache, it's possible to serve any further like any subsequent request of those static resources from cache. It may be from cache alone without consulting with the network that would allow us to deliver offline experience websites that could only work in offline as long as they don't have dynamic content, right? But there are also websites which do not really care about offline. They would more care about uh, performance, like uh, the, the time that application reloads the page or shows uh, first render when user navigates to other page. Uh, they would also benefit from pre-caching because uh, like even though dynamic content would be received from network, uh, the static content for the application cache would be coming from cache only. And there will be no time for, like no additional time for loading uh, spent on the getting the static resources because they will be handled by service worker, not going to the network at all. So that's the general concept of the pre-cache. And Vorbox has its implementation uh, in Vorbox precation library. Um, so that looks pretty similar, um, like similar to what we would write to uh, in the native service workers API, but uh, also Vorbox guarantees some updates and uh, yeah, nice syntax. Uh, so that's precation route method. <laughs> would naturally accept the list of the static resources. Here we have styles and scripts and uh, markup index HTML. And it would put it, put those resources, like download them and put them to cache, uh, cache API, using cache API. And as a uh, user would navigate to pages and like uh, more uh, scripts would be needed or new fonts would be needed. They will be served from cache. Uh, and Vorbox implements cache first strategy. Uh, that means that if the resource is in the cache, it will be served from there. But uh, if it's not, it will be there will be network requests. So it seems like more reliable to, to rely on cache only. And the list of URLs, except of the URLs, you see also revision information for some of, some of the resources. That's like the hash of the, of the file content. But for others, there is not revision information because it's uh, in the URL itself. And that's basically the best practice for static resources. Uh, having the like the version of the resource based on the content in the URL. So then if there are revisions uh, for this one, for index HTML, it's like separate um, setting because of the requirement to have revision information that Warbox puts, it guarantees that the resource would be updated uh, only when it's, um, like if there is a new version of it, uh, basically the revision would, would change for the new version and the resource will be received from the network. However nice it sounds, it seems tedious to write this, uh, like uh, every line uh, for every resource of the website. So likely you'd want this to do in the, uh, oh, sorry, on, on the build step. 
and that list of URLs, uh, when automatically generated, would be called uh, pre-cache manifest, uh, the URLs and their revision information. And there are three ways to do it. Uh, that's all delivered by Warbox. Uh, there are mod modules that run in built environments, so here they are. Warbox built its NPM package, not package uh, that can be used as a gulp task or in NPM run script. Warbox CLI for people who love command line and Warbox Webpack plugin. Uh, in fact, there are two of them. Uh, also put some uh, limitation that you can you could only use Webpack, but it seems it's like pro popular choice. Uh, so yeah, not bad one. Uh, so first one generate service worker plugin uh, would be used uh, for the most simple cases. It would generate the whole service worker web, uh, file and um, would enable pre-caching. So nothing, basically no work for developer except for adding um, service worker like webpack plugin to their config. And there is also inject manifest, which allows more flexibility uh, by uh, allowing developer to write the service worker file, but uh, also generating that pre-cache manifest list. So that's that's what uh, the Webpack module inject manifest would provide. It will fill up this Warbox manifest variable with the URLs um, and revision information. And that would happen even before the website release. So it's um, yeah, like, that's the nature why uh, those modules are for built environment only. The developer or some CI would run it. And besides the pre-caching of application shell, uh, there is also runtime caching when you put resources in cache while user requested. So if user visited like three out of 50 pages on the application, only though three may be cached, but others may not. But usually, um, like this caching strategy, the like caching policy, I guess, works because uh, people tend to review what where they uh, were before. So it's like in e-commerce world, uh, world, it's a likely pattern. But obviously, if you put something in cache, uh, no matter if before user requested the resources or when they go, uh, you would want to read from that cache, make, some, make use of it. And there are uh, common patterns how a service worker would generate response for, as soon as intercepted the request, whether five popular strategies, uh, but also uh, caching strategies, but allows to define your own by implementing some particular life cycle events. So let's see, oh no, <laughs> before that, uh, yeah, we need um, usually the caching, caching strategies, because it defines where the service worker would intercept the request, uh, get the request, be aware of it, and what will it do? Work with some caching strategy. So register router method basically describes uh, this accurately. So matching callback is that the, uh, the answer to question should Warbox internally service worker handle that request. So um, we could answer the question URL, it looks like this, like string or regular expression set of URLs, or even provide a function with the Boolean, um, the re Boolean result to, to decide if the request should be handled by Warbox and what to do with that request. That would be a handle callback, which usually is used as Warbox strategy, uh, one of the five you saw below before, but also, yeah, custom implementation is possible as soon as that's a function that returns a promise with a response, network response um, class. So how that would look and code, uh, 
nice thing that um, the routing, like it's possible to define several routes for uh, different files and have several handlers. So here we have two different like ways to handle JavaScript and handle CSS. It's usually not the case in the real world, I believe, but uh, yeah, nonetheless, it's possible to yeah, decide based on the resource what you want to do with them. Pretty obvious uh, that the resource which is requested on the web page, like a user uh, the, um, opening some uh, page, it, the request will be received by service worker and it will check if there is a cache response for it and will return that response, cached response to the web page. There is no like back route to network uh, because there is no like um, putting resources to cache. Obviously, the cache should be filled up, basically pre cached for with application cache usually. Uh, so then that strategy could be used uh, for those pre-cached resources for application shell with pre-set up step, pre-caching step. No using service worker through network and won't be handled in service worker in any way. Um, that uh, That's still applicable for non get resources responses, uh, non-get requests, uh, because cache API doesn't allow to cache that. It allows to cache only get requests, like by specification. And uh, besides that, there might be like other get requests, but still you wouldn't want to cache them. That's a pink request or analytical request if you have some Google Analytics on, on the website. Uh, so you would, wouldn't want to cache it or yeah, do something else with it. Yeah, the network request. Uh, so usually it's used in offline first applications. That would be the majority of requests. Uh, they will be served from cache, and others requests would be because exceptions from this strategy for particular pink request, for example. There's also it's uh, mirror to being network first uh, with cache. Uh, so yeah, pretty much uh, same with interchangeably. The request will be served from network by default, but if there is no uh, network uh, access or there is a um, yeah, bad response, like a 500 response from the server, the cached version, <coughs> if it's available, will be attempted to use. And this is uh, rather used for uh, quick fixes when um, network isn't stable for the user. So usually they use like fresh resources from the network, but if something is uh, flaky or unstable, uh, there might be a course of events that the resource is cached and we could still shop something to the user because like, if you're browsing the website and then suddenly it's uh, on off, offline and that <coughs> dinosaur, offline dinosaur in Chrome is there. So likely the user would like the website, but there is a way to engage them with cached, at least cached content. So they don't leave immediately. Maybe that uh, flaky Wi-Fi uh, yeah, will be stable the next moment. And the last one, uh, interesting stale while in, in the early days strategy, similar to HTTP cache, if you're familiar with this one. Um, so it, it has some uh, like network overhead because the resource will be uh, cached 
like will, resource will be shown to the user from cache. Uh, so that's this route, but also at the same time, the request to refresh that cache will be sent to network. So user would see uh, something from cache uh, and the fresh resource will be like one request uh, from them. So they will get that fresh resource on the next uh, like request. It's uh, suitable only for some um, like resources that do update frequently, but uh, they not critical to be fresh at the moment. Um, so the you know, example would be avatar. It's not critical to show the latest, uh, yeah, one more page refresh or one more visit of the page could show the latest resource, but it, it still would be, uh, would seem fast for the user because it would be served from cache in, in the first place. Yeah, let's see <laughs> some word blocks uh, code. Um, yeah, it, it's simple in the simplest way. Uh, so we have routing here and strategy. Uh, routing to match the request, for example, avatars would be used using stale wire revalidate strategy and also <coughs> scripts and styles, something from uh, the application shell uh, would use cache first strategy so that um, they also will be fast enough. So this, this would, uh, would be updating like minus one uh, request, but this would, would be served from cache uh, until the, the service worker updates, the like new version of the website releases and yes, scripts would get that new hash in the URL or until user clears the cache, there will be then network request to refresh the resource. So when to use uh, each of those strategy? Um, you, as you see, uh, the, like it's possible to define several strategies for different resources, and that's how it is usually in the in practice. But also, you need to understand the resources uh, whether they update frequently, uh, like avatars or uh, some leadership board or they are static for a website like application shell. Uh, and at the same time, it's uh, the, that variable whether it's critical to have fresh resource, like the latest resource on the page, because it's uh, vital for your logic on the website or user, enga user engagement. It's acceptable to have some staleness, uh, like to, to be minus one request of the freshness. Uh, so usually you would use uh, cache only for static resources, which uh, may not update, uh, I guess, frequently uh, without like one more release. And it's acceptable to have website uh, somewhat stale, uh, not the critical functionality would be still dynamic. And cache first strategy would be used uh, to the content that updates uh, frequently but it still tolerates some staleness. Uh, network only, yeah, we said non get requests, uh, which you don't have like uh, the offline version of them, uh, or if user some, like does some mutating operations, uh, sends post request. So that would be on network only. But also there is that uh, quick fix for engaging users while their connection is unstable. That's network strategy, network first strategy. So like prolonging the time they remain on the website, if that matters, like mostly for, yeah, I mean, you know, for e-commerce website, that would be a, a typical case to, to have users as long as possible on the website. And that stale wire validate stands aside for those frequently changed resources, but not as critical, so they can tolerate some staleness. And there is this uh, empty quadrant, uh, which is actually your service worker, because its freshness is critical if you want to, like, if you want to deliver updates to the user. And also it's static for website version uh, because it's part of the website resource for application shell. And usually you don't want to cache it at all. Uh, and 
like not, not even use network only strategy for client side caching, but not uh, using even for HTTP caching. Uh, yeah, let's see briefly plugins. Maybe we'll have yeah question section after that. Um, so plugins are used together with caching strategies typically, and they uh, extend their functionality. Um, they hide a lot of code that uh, developers would need to write to achieve same outcome. So expiration plugin, while sounds uh, natural, that should be coming with caching, uh, but in fact, it's not. Uh, so this plugin delivers the cache expiration uh, functionality based on the uh, time that the resource exists, uh, like was sitting in the cache and the number of um, cached resources. So it's not uh, coming with the cache. Cache API, uh, like part of it, uh, it's user managed and Workbox provides this plugin to, to make it easy. There is cacheable response plugin for uh, deciding whether the resource should be cached on some criteria. Uh, that's a particular header or response status. So you wouldn't want to cache uh, 500 responses. So that's uh, about it, pretty successful. So cache only successful responses. Background sync is most handy when it comes uh, to failing, to replay and failed uh, requests, usually of mutating nature, those that use network only strategy. Uh, so this plugin allows to save those failed requests to some background queue and replay them next time when network is available. Broadcast update plugin is for uh, notifying service worker clients. That's naturally all the tabs that user open. And if user mutates, it works in one tab and the cache is mutating uh, based on the user input. Uh, the tabs will be notified as well and would have a chance to update their UI if based on the something in cache, for example. Range requests, uh, Plugin works with um, uh, requests uh, with range header. That's uh, usually real time audio and video. And of course, there is a custom plugin option that uh, developers could write. And by implementing several uh, methods that required for plugin could achieve yeah, completely a new functionality. That's how plugin could be used. Now we have three libraries. So that's the cache for images uh, using a cache first uh, strategy. Uh, so you remember uh, like images, uh, like there will be request for image. It will be intercepted by warm box handled in cache first. It means that the, if image is cached, it will be served to the user from cache or there will be network request and yeah, cache again. Uh, and there is no like cache clear functionality in that uh, cache first uh, strategy. So that's why uh, expiration plugin would be handy. Uh, so it would limit uh, 60 images to be saved to cache. So as soon as 61st is saved, the, the very first, like the oldest image will be cleared. And there is also max age, like for serving, uh, having cash uh, for five months <laughs> seems like too much. Uh, yeah, unless it's some super engaging website, usually it's less. Um, so yeah, also the, as soon as, uh, the, the outdated resource is cached and it's like older than 30 days, it will be also cleared. Uh, and then on the ne next request, the network uh, request will be made and fresh resource will be cached. And last thing, uh, yeah, that's uh, logs. Uh, yeah, Workbox provides um, login with um, different levels um, of engagement. So that's what you would see in the like, developer mod logs. Uh, so it would inform uh, the developer 
on every intercepted uh, request and if Workbox is ready to, to handle that request. So pretty nice uh, if you <laughs> have bugs uh, in service workers, so that would help. Okay, before we get to the last section, uh, yeah, are there any questions so far? Okay, let's get to it. That's web background synchronization API. Uh, it's used internally by Workbox uh, for a plugin with a similar name. And the API itself describes a method that enables uh, web applications to synchronize their data in the background. Yeah, sounds like pretty descriptive. Uh, so it, this specification is a working draft right now. It means uh, it, it's not adopted by the majority of the browsers, unlike Service Workers API. Uh, so it works on Chrome and Edge so far. And uh, yeah, about sync event. Uh, so background synchronization uh, is most handy when uh, it gets for user uh, doing mutating requests like post and page, and they may fail for various reasons. Maybe Wi-Fi is unstable, the server is down, but in either case, you'd want to try sending that request later, and that's like synchronizing your client and uh, server. And ideally, uh, you'd want to, this to happen without user interaction. That's the background part of it. And surprisingly, background synchronization API doesn't define where and how to save those requests. It's pretty simple. It says when to retry. And uh, that point of when to retry is manif manifest in sync event, which is at the heart of this API. Basically, the API defines when uh, that sync event should be dispatched by the browser. And that's about it. And that API is built on the service work on top of service workers API and service worker would receive that sync event. That's when browser thinks that network is available and uh, recommends access. It's a, the, the right time to retry failed request if you have any. So service worker would receive that event and uh, yeah, may send any requests um, which, which were saved in some particular way. Um, and because service workers are able to run in the background, even if user close all the tabs, that would, would deliver that background part uh, without user interaction. Uh, Workbox web's uh, background sync uh, plugin uh, fills those uh, like empty spaces on the how to save and when to save those requests. Uh, they choose to uh, save on the as soon as the request uh, network request fails, uh, meaning that the network is available, not available, or you could also define this as uh, uh, some particular response statuses from the server, that request would be saved to IndexDB. That's uh, asynchronous um, storage available in the browser. Uh, it, it allows to save uh, like objects and like um, local storage works with mostly JSON strings. IndexedDB is uh, yeah, closer to, to what we would expect from database. It allows to save objects. And uh, those requests might be replayed on the next sync event, which will be sent by the browser. Uh, replay it mean the, the request will be sent with the same re request uh, body retrieved from IndexDB. And what's nice about this plugin, it uh, kind of fills up the, the gap between browsers supporting Sync uh, API or, and not supporting, for example, Safari. Uh, Warbox still uh, guarantees that requests will be attempted to be replayed uh, on the next service worker start for those browsers that do not support this uh, API. So how that could be used? Uh, similar to how plugins are used in general, there is still register router uh, function to intercept API requests with, with JSON in some, some way in the name. 
There will be network handling strategy, uh, meaning that requests usually should come through network. Uh, oh yeah, th those are particular post requests, not get. And uh, if they fail, that that will be handled by background sync plugin. It will save failed request to some uh, IndexedDB table with this name, my key name, and will attempt to replay them during 24 hours. Uh, so if uh, a kid would attempt to replay, if that fails, there will be like replay of replay queues, and they will be attempted at, uh, yet again until that expiration uh, retention time expires. Interestingly, that background sync plugin uh, also is a part like internally used by uh, Wormbox Google Analytics. Uh, just because I imagine Google uh, and Google uh, tries to make it more popular, the analytics uh, service. So they allow to uh, collect analytics, Google Analytics, uh, even from the browsers who have unstable connection uh, using the background sync API, background sync plugin. Uh, so yeah, dynamics is pretty much the same. The request will be saved to IndexDB and retry it later. And uh, yeah, one of the points of Google Analytics uh, that you could have like custom dimensions, custom settings of those analytical requests and uh, basically distinguish uh, the functionality and the action that user makes in offline versus offline by providing this custom flag. So we're going to, to have yet yeah, to see like two websites, case study I call it, it's not particular demos. Um, yeah, but uh, while we get into this, uh, any questions yeah, we should cover before that? All right. Uh, so those are two e-commerce uh, website basically. Uh, one is some uh, UK clothing brand. Yeah, uh, not familiar with this one. So what we check first uh, if there is a service worker, and we'll trying to get to that um, mobile experience. Let's do this. No. Okay, we'll see, and then we'll resize. So here's how the service worker would look with the website. That's, I would say it's a trivial example uh, of the real production website. Um, so what you could expect to see here, the version of the Warbox, it's version five. Say it became better, but yeah, let's see. And we could see that register router method uh, and two strategies. Yeah, <laughs> seems like one. Uh, so they use cache first. Yeah, they use pre caching uh, for some pre cache manifest, and that's how it looks like. We could check it in cache here. Uh, yeah, we have pre-caching, yeah. pre -cache resources of the website, not so many of them. Yeah, seems, uh, looks like this, not a big website. There's also runtime caching based on what user visits. And yeah, this one I uh, didn't, this one didn't have a hold on. Uh, so they use the expiration plugin for, um, for managing the cache. So that's what like they cache, runtime cache for one day, which seems uh, yeah, sensible, <laughs> not, not 30 days. Uh, and there's also an option to push that cache as soon as they reach like the limit of the storage. So it's not like five megabytes, it's sometime when browser would throw a, an error, a quote exited probably error, and that cache would be cleared and it would be filled up again. Uh, so let's see what it actually can do. It first, the website. Uh, first, what's noticeable, it's pretty fast. Um, get the method. 
Я вот жду Хэллоуин. Yeah, preparing your uh, Halloween suit here is the, the website with offline support for this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if we open some page, uh, next time I'll open it, it will be faster. So now I see the image faster and uh, what's noticeable about um, the offline. So it's using cash for strategy and there is no network. Uh, the request obviously would fail, but they still could return the, to the page which was cached. It won't be cached tomorrow <laughs> because of that uh, like expir expiration strategy, but as a user with unstable connection, we still have the, the web pages to, to see before I leave. So if you're familiar with me, quality attributes and non-functional requirements. That's exactly what uh, reliability is about, uh, how long the, the product runs towards uh, until it fails. So without network, this process won't fail like, uh, altogether uh, for some of the pages, it still could set some. Yeah, but then uh, if I refresh, there is no that um, like without network, there is no that set Chrome dinosaur, but um, there is the not so friendly, but still the website serve yeah, cache page which says if you are offline. So yeah, if I'm back to the network, I will again the, the website. Ready to use it again. There is somewhat smarter experience in this one. There's your formula website. It's more complex, uh, but with nature supports. Let's check it out. This one, uh, this page, I'm not sure if I visit it. So let's try if we can get the um, let's make it small. This refresh can be mostly coming from the cache. So even if Wi-Fi is slow, it could be like it could move as it's still like up and running with the same speed because uh, most of the resources are doing it from cache. And service worker file for this one would look more complex. And naturally this um, didn't stop that. Uh, so that's how we look service worker file generated by the uh, webpack plugin generate service worker. That's only precaution with manifest, but also it uses uh, scripts, it imports other scripts in service worker. And this one is more complex um, just because it handles the caching based on the um, like server, um, server headers, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there is special header that might be coming from server uh, if it should be uh, served from cache. And there are various strategies to be, to be, the way it should be handled. Cache only for, I imagine, for some resources that are static for, for the website version, but also there is server site rendering which should be going through network. And they also have then, uh, the cache only strategy which might be 
um, fall back into network only. But if that still fails, uh, the offline response, similar to what we saw on the previous website, with the you are offline, try again later. So they also have the, the special page to, to inform user what, what's going on. So it's not like failing and without uh, yeah, understanding what's, what happened. But this one uh, uses many strategies uh, and there's network only at the very end. And also is powered by some other library uh, which does this server-side caching and like manipulating uh, headers from the server and reacting service worker to this. So this one is like more complex example. So that's about it. Um, yeah, last um, chance to, to get any questions.